What do we have uh, under this compartment? What's this? Well, that's our live well, Fred. And I've installed a, uh, a little thing there that allows the water to come in from the lake so we have circulating water to okay. keep the fish alive. Okay, the fish that you catch. You don't use it for bait. That's right, the fish that we catch. Okay. That's a, did you, did it come with that plug? No, it didn't. You installed that too? Yes, I did. Golly, okay, you have your life preservers here, a net for all those big bass. And finally, let's look at this anchor reel you have here, Bob. Uh, so one man, I assume, you can operate this yourself when you're fishing. Oh, yes, and, it's, and it stores the line on it. How does it work? Well, you see that little black thing there? Okay, Give yeah. that a twist, Fred. Whoop! <laughs> Okay, so you let your anchor down and what, just crank it up? Just crank it right back up. Oh, that is now, handy. Now see how that nests in there. Look at that, isn't that something? That's right. Got to try that again. Whoop. Boy, that's simple. That is handy. Well, Bob, you've really done a number on this bass boat. How much would it cost for a guy to buy a 14-foot boat like this to customize it the way you've done? Oh, I would say about $800 altogether, including the extras that I have on the boat. Not including the motor, Fred. Right. Well, that's quite a deal. Quite a handy tip from Bob Musselman, who's figured out how an average fisherman can uh, make a bass boat for himself that has all the luxuries you'd ever want, and it doesn't have to cost you eight or ten grand. Well, I'm sure, Bob, that will be inspiring to a lot of fishermen out there who would like the conveniences of a bass boat. How do you summarize? Do people ask you, why do you have to have a bass boat? How do you summarize the advantages of it? Okay, a boat like mine uh, has a very shallow draft, Fred. Mm -hmm. It draws maybe four inches of water, and that means that I can get in the shallow areas like we've been fishing on the film there. Uh, also, the high seats will give you a better advantage of seeing down into the water. You have a better visibility factor mm -hmm. there. The electric motor is a must. Oh, yeah, that's nice. That'll get you through the weeds, and you saw that I had a weed guard on that motor. That'll get you through any kind of water. Now, that doesn't catch your fish, though. But we're going to be back in just a minute. Find out how Bob Musselman catches those lunkers after this message from the Sporting Goods Department at Meyer. Well, Bob Musselman, i got to admit, you implanted ideas in my head of maybe catching seven- and eight-pound bass out in those lily pads. How often does that happen? Oh, maybe once a season, Fred. I catch a big one like that. But you usually catch bass, don't you? Oh, yes. Well, I can attest to that. That day that we were out there fishing with the pork rind frogs and the lily pads, we did catch bass, and this is what our action was like. Oh, okay. Got one, Bob. Oh, look at this. He's hung up in the weeds. There we go. Look, look close. Grab him by the lip? Grab, grab him by the lower lip. Okay. Grab him by the lower lip with thumb and forefinger. There we go. Okay, you got him. That's not well, he's a little bad. devil. I think we should throw that one back. Throw this one back? Yeah. Yeah, he's a little devil, but you're right there in here. How big of a, how big of a bass are you caught in these little pads like this? In the... Over eight pounds. Wow. In, in this particular spot, yes. It's incredible. Now, what, I, I must have done all right setting the hook. You did. Hey, you did real well. Yeah. You, boy, I can see I can hardly get this hook out of this guy's mouth. Whew. Yeah, I'd really? let him go, Fred. Let, no. let, him, let him grow up. There he goes. Well, let's go back and get another one, get something a little bigger. Oh, wow. You got him? He hit pretty close, didn't he, Bob? Yeah, he did. Well, well he couldn't have been more than, what, 15 feet from the boat. We're going to use the old, the old bottom lip method here. Sure. We'll end up in the emergency room in the hospital. There we go. There we go. Well, that's a nice little bass. Sure. Sure. That's a keeper. Well, geez, Bob, you're, uh, <laughs> you're proving they're in here. You going to put him in the bait box or in the uh, Why don't I just release him and, and let okay. you fellas see him? Get, uh, there. Bye-bye. Look at okay. this. We got a little rain and you got a little fish. But you, you're using a crankbait, or a... a spinnerbait. Spinnerbait. Yeah. Oh, and now the rain's coming down. What do you think? Is this rain going to help fishing? Uh, yes, it should. It, it, it should help. Great. Well, let's get him in. Well, again, not a bad one and caught in the lily pads. Oh, that rain's coming down now. That's a nice little bass. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Let's uh, let him grow.
Well, Bob, you remember that day, don't you? I sure do, Fred. And, and I, did you heard me, or I heard you say there that this, this rain might help the fishing. Right. I love to fish in the rain. Well, I tell you, we hightailed it, though. That rain really came down. That was a bad storm that came up that day, Fred. You really can't afford to be out on the lake with a, a thunderstorm. It gets a little dangerous, and that rain came down like cats and dogs. But you would normally stay out if it was sprinkling or just moderate rain? The only thing that scares me is the lightning. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that scared us. Now you can see here, the look on your face, a bit concerned. The wind was kicking up, and there's Bob Bishop right behind you, our faithful cameraman who filmed most of this. He's trying to keep his gear dry, <laughs> get things put together as quickly as possible. That's one thing about Southern Michigan. You know, when we left just a couple hours earlier, there wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was hot weather. We were worried about getting sunburned, and we all left our rain ponchos in the car. That's right. Uh, that's one lesson you should learn is le never leave that rain suit in the car. That's a lesson we should learn, but why didn't we? We know that. Boy, what a day that was. Bob, uh, looks like we <laughs> took on a little water we here. We sure did, about three inches of water, You're Fred. crying out loud. Well, we got blown off the lake, but uh, you showed me that you can catch bass in the middle of the day, in the middle of the summer, in three feet of water. You sure can. That's terrific. Well, we're going to have to uh, go back after him in uh, oh, a few weeks, try some of those crankbaits and see what we can do with that. We'll do that. And here is one of these little crankbaits that we were just talking about, Bob. No mystery why they're called crankbaits, is it? No, there isn't, Fred. You just crank that reel as fast as you can turn the handles. And of course, that lure digs down under the water. Well, while we go to the film in just a few seconds here, showing the day that we used the crankbaits, let's talk to Don Stevens also. Don, you're from the Michigan chapter of the National Bass Association. Yes, I am. Right, and you sort of represent them public relations-wise, getting new members and new affiliate clubs. The bass anglers I know have an awful lot of tournaments every year, even in Michigan. Yes, they have, our chapter federation has at least six tournaments a year, and if you belong to clubs, you can fish at least six more, which could put you in the 12 weekends a year. Then these tournaments basically are catch and release, right? You don't they keep are, the fish and kill them. Our main objective is the catch and release, and do not kill your catch. That's why we really try to get into that, do not kill your catch. So bass fishing, in summary, is really sport fishing, especially from the standpoint of the clubs. As sport fishing is, our main purpose is to promote bass fishing as a major sport. Mm -hmm. And next would be to support the local DNR in their efforts of um, enforcing their laws and the clean up the lakes and club efforts. And um, just so on, as being in a club would be to help develop new fishing techniques, the use of new tackle, and mm -hmm. especially boating safety. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, that's very good. And of course, you're looking for members Looking yes. for clubs, formation of clubs, and here, well, look at this. Bob Musselman ties into a scrappy little bass there. That was a nice one, Bob. That was a nice bass, Fred. That's a keeper for sure. Although I noticed you sure, sure do toss a lot back. Of course, you're used to catching those big ones. That's right. I couldn't possibly eat all the ones I catch. And here's a technique which is very useful. Out and drifting out in water, what we were fishing 10 feet deep. We were fishing in 10 feet of water, and that's a marker boy that I just mm -hmm. threw out there. And that'll help us stick to that area because there might be other largemouth right in the lo locality. Well, that was a nice one. It's a dandy bass. There it is, the boy. Now, here's another technique that you were showing me, Bob, where you really thrust your rod right down in the water to maybe work it a little deeper. I wanted that crankbait to run deeper, so I put the rod down in the water, and that gives me two or three two or three feet more depth, mm -hmm. Fred. And that, as we see, caught you a nice pike. Well, Don, let's get to the address where people can write if they want more information. Yes, the address is the Michigan Bass Federation, Box 224, Oshtemo, Michigan. And I will personally answer any letter, and I will, within a 50-mile radius of your home, I will write you and tell you where you, the Close clubs are in your area. Yeah, well, that's great, and we'll, we'll flash that address up at the end of the show again. But that bass fishing can really be an outstanding sport. Uh, bass clubs are becoming predominant, and, of course, Bob Musselman attests to the fact that there's lots of big bass. We'll be right back to finish up this edition of Michigan Weekend after this message from Meyer Thrifty Acres. <laughs> 